Hey guys, what's up? I'm here with a review of a of a horror exploitation slat splatter splatter film from 1972 from director Herschel Gordon Lewis, the man who made the world's first splatter film, Blood Feast, and as well as 2000 Maniacs, Color Me Blood Red, The Wizard of Gore, and Blood Feast 2, All You Can Eat. This movie's coming from this guy, so I'm so I assume this is going to be pretty good, because I've only seen one Herschel Gordon Lewis film that I did not like. So let's give this. Uh, yeah, today's movie is the Gore. Go well, I guess today today's movie is the Gore Gore Girls. If you can tell by the title, it's a film about that has to do with like strippers being killed. And like there's there's these, there's these murders with the strippers and stuff, and the, the this uh, sleazy private eye is hired to investigate these murders and everything. So let's hope that this one is gonna be good, shall we? So the movie picks up almost immediately with a go-go girl, or I guess stripper in this case, getting her face mauled by a fucking mirror. Like a guy walks in there, grabs her head, and forces it into a mirror, and repeatedly does this for like 30 seconds. Damn. Alright? Just damn. So... Then we get some credit. Then we get our opening credits and stuff. And our reporter, who is like one of our main characters, is talking to the private eye. Oh, excuse me. It's talking to the private eye, and he's like, and she's like, "Come on, help me, help me investigate this thing. We'll give you me and my newspaper. We will give you like five thousand dollars to help us investigate these murders and solve them." And uh, yeah, within six minutes, we have some. Uh, we already get some TNA, and the private eye is basically at the strip club where the stripper had worked. And he asks about the girl who was killed. Um, he gets someone who might be the killer, or someone who's a basic suspect in the crime. Um, and he goes out to meet with. He goes out to meet the guy him and the reporter do and the guy's not there and then there's a very kind of funny scene with him bribing the guy's friend into telling him where he is and uh... Um, then we see a stripper who just decides suddenly while home alone to start stripping in front of a mirror while chewing gum and in the middle of blowing a bubble a guy comes up behind her well the killer comes up behind her and hits her on the head with like this mallet and it, I mean it looked like it would probably hurt and when he hits her on the head she's in the middle of blowing a bubble and then she closes it off just as she's like she coughs up blood into the bubble so the bubble is filled with blood that's actually kind of a cool little uh, scene I guess but anyway, the killer gets to just completely destroying her face with a knife. Like, to the point where at first it's really, really, like, just really graphic. It's pretty graphic and gross. And then you kind of look at it and you're like, okay, that's a bit too small to be a skull. And you wouldn't be able to get through a skull like that with a knife. I don't care how strong you are. Um, I mean, I'm sure you could. But... This guy was just like bare. Well, he wasn't really swinging it that hard, and he was swinging, not stabbing. So I don't think he would. I don't think he would have, or, the, or you know, the killer would have been able to, uh, like completely just crush her skull with it. So as with most of Herschel Gordon Lewis's movies, the acting here is really bad. Same with the writing. It's it was bad. It's cheesy. It's funny. Um, the effects in this movie are cheesy and almost like maybe 10% realistic and just really entertaining. The characters here are really flat, um, but they're not completely lifeless and they're not annoying. You know, they're okay to spend an hour and 20 minutes with. Uh, the picture quality on the film is pretty decent. Uh, the lighting and camera work uh, are about average. They're pretty, pretty good. Um, 
<laughs> the sound mix is decent. The music is uh, like a lot of a lot of like public domain stuff. So that's that's okay, I guess. Um, oh god. Mm. Um. So, uh, yeah, the, this movie is really funny and kind of cheesy, and it always keep, has something weird or interesting or funny or goofy going on. And there's 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 a few sight gags. There's a few times that the uh, private eye like breaks the fourth wall, refer, you know, and he talks directly to the audience and stuff, and that's really really cool. Um, it's both intentionally and uninten and unintentionally funny. And I really like that because it feels like at this point in his career, Herschel Gordon Lewis was like, okay, I'm starting to realize that people don't like my movies because they're violent. People like my movies because they're violent and they're just really bad. And he decided to actually put, you know, real humor in there and not just make it unintentional. Um, like I've said, he, uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis has a talent for making bad movies, and this one's pretty bad. Uh, just, I mean, if you've seen his other films, I think you know what to expect. Uh, if you're going to watch this one as your first Herschel Gordon Lewis film, I'd say go in, just don't go in expecting something as, something like Citizen Kane, and I think you'll be just, just go in expecting the absolute worst, and you might get a pretty good film. Also, the, also the uh, kills in this film, they start out pretty, pretty decent, like, you know, uh, 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 you know, a slit throat, a stabbing here and there, and then it gets to the point where the killer is using a iron, like a clothes iron, to iron someone's face. This is this actually happens. This is some of the most ridiculous like, just death scenes in a movie I've ever seen. Um, on the gore meter from one to ten, one makes them like the corpse grinders, and ten makes them like brain dead. Uh, the gore gore girls is probably about a four a point. Five. Um, honestly, I expected a bit more from Herschel Gordon Lewis, uh, because I had heard from a lot of people that this like is this absolutely goriest movie, um, and this was like the last. I'm pretty sure this was the last splatter film or last film he like ever made until he made uh, Blood Feast Two: All You Can Eat in 2002. So he took a long hiatus between that. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm I'm not you know I'm not looking at the IMDb right now, but he made it and yeah, this was like what this is like one of the last splatter films he had made, and I heard like oh he went out with a bang here you know it's it's extremely gory and I mean it's it's really not that bad it's not as bad as like the Wizard of Gore was, honestly I still think the Wizard of Gore is probably his just most violent, goriest movie, and I still gotta say The Wizard of Gore is probably still one of my favorites. Um, honestly, I think it's about even with The Wizard of Gore, although I prefer The Wizard of Gore to this one because that one had a uh, really cool kind of plot and twist to it. Uh, it's still not my favorite Herschel Gordon Lewis film. My favorite is still Blood Feast, um, but I am gonna have to pick up the Blu-ray double pack of uh, The Gore Gore Girls and, and uh, the Wizard of Gore, because I really like both of these movies. Um, yeah, Blood Feast is still probably my all-time favorite, and there's like one more splatter film in his filmography. Well, maybe two if you count the movie that's coming out this year, because he's actually getting back into filmmaking, and he hasn't made a movie in quite a few years, and he's working on a, an anthology film project. So. Uh, maybe the one that's supposed to come out like this year is going to be really good. I'm hoping for that. But uh, there's like one more of his older splatter films on uh, on his filmography that I still haven't seen, The Gruesome Twosome. Um, and that one I really haven't heard a ton about. I don't really hear much about that one. I hear a lot more about Blood Feast and 2000 Maniacs and all his other films. But uh, I'm starting to ramble. Uh, if you're a fan of Herschel Gordon Lewis and you haven't seen this one, I'd definitely say check it out. If you're not a fan of Herschel Gordon Lewis, then it's kind of obvious you should stay away from this one. Um, I'd probably give it a 4 out of 5. I really liked it, and it's it's, it's, it's just a fun movie. Um, definitely not, you know, like, a, an extremely serious film. It's no, it's no Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. You know, it's no Gummo, it's no... 
it, it, it's no come and see, it's nothing serious, I guess. <laughs> so anyway guys, if you like the video, like my channel, be sure to like this video, favorite it, whatever you want, and maybe subscribe perhaps, I would really, really appreciate that, and check the links in the description below, there are links to things like my Tumblr, Twitter, all that, Facebook, all that is in the description below, as well as Rotten Cotton t-shirts where I get my horror film t-shirts like this I Drink Your Blood t-shirt I'm wearing right now. This is available on their site for like 15 bucks. It's a pretty good deal if you buy like six or seven shirts and you get it and uh, if they're like under 20 bucks you get you can buy them all together as a package and you get it for like 70 bucks and it's a really really good deal. It's where I get my horror from t-shirts and be sure to um, check out my friend Chloe her cosplay and makeup tutorial channel. It is in the description she always does something really interesting, really cool. And I guess that's it. I'm signing off. You guys have a good day, good night, good whatever. Peace.